Hey everyone, this is Cedric from Vertex Marketing Agency. And in this video, we're gonna talk about Facebook advanced matching. So I'm gonna first explain what it is, then why you should actually have this set up if ever you are running ads, then I'm actually just gonna show you how to do it using Google Tag Manager. But before we actually get into this content, I will ask you that you give this video a thumbs up. And what that does is actually helps other people just like you find this video. That's just how the YouTube algorithm works. And if you wanna learn new things about Facebook ads every week, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because we release videos about Facebook ads every week. Anyways, let me remove my face and let's get into this week's content. Okay, so first, what is Facebook advanced matching? Well, whenever you are sending an event to Facebook, for example, a purchase, you can actually add additional information to that event. You can add the user's first name, last name, email, phone number, and a lot more information. And then what Facebook does when they receive that event, again, a purchase event, they can actually open it up and read this data and then they can use that data to try to match it with a Facebook profile. So what it does is it really increases your chances of seeing potentially more purchases or more leads inside your campaigns because you're giving Facebook more data to work with. So this is something that is really important to do if you are a serious advertiser. Like I always say to my client, we wanna send as much data and as much information to Facebook to increase our chance of getting matched with the Facebook profile to be able to report that event inside our ad account. So like I said earlier in this video, I'm going to be using Google Tag Manager to set all this up. Now, if ever it's your first time hearing this name, Google Tag Manager, well, in this video, I'm actually not gonna cover too much on how to use the tool and what the tool is. If you wanna learn more about how to use it, I've actually made a ton of other videos on this channel on how to do that. And I'll uh, leave a few links in the description of this video, like how to set this up on your website. and really how to navigate and use a tool. Okay, so I'm using Google Tag Manager. In case you're wondering, I'm gonna be setting this up on my demo uh, website, which is actually a WordPress website, and I am using WooCommerce. Okay, so this is my setup. So unfortunately, the customer's first name, last name, email, and phone number doesn't just appear out of nowhere. You actually need to configure it. And there's two main ways of configuring it. One of them is using a data layer, and then the other one is via JavaScript. Now, I'm gonna show you both ways, and I know I just mentioned JavaScript, but don't freak out if you don't know how to read or write JavaScript, because there's actually a Chrome extension that you can use that will write the code for you. So um, I'm gonna show you that extension um, in a few minutes, but I just wanted to say that if you have the option, I recommend that you use a data layer versus doing it via JavaScript. But the reason I'm showing you both ways is that I know some of you might not be able to install a data on the website, whether because it's, they don't have the expertise in-house or maybe it's actually your platform doesn't support it. So that's why I'm showing you option number two, which is JavaScript. So the first question is, do you currently have a data layer installed on the website? And one of the easiest way to check is to actually go through, let's say the purchase process or your conversion process on your site and look at your thank you page and I'm gonna show you exactly what it would look like if you had a data layer. Okay, so I just placed an order on my demo site and if I inspect the page, Right, so I'm clicking, right clicking, um, and then clicking inspect. And then if I click on console, I can actually type here data layer. And click enter. And now I'm gonna open this up. And here, uh, number zero, if I open this up, I can actually see some of the billing information um, with my, you know, my, my billing first name, billing last name. Uh, postal code, phone number, and all the kind of information. And if I open this up, I can actually see that uh, it was in the Canadian currency. And if I, let's say I open the, the purchase, I could see exactly how much I paid. So this is actually called a data layer. And a data layer is really just pushing information to the console when certain things happen. So whenever a purchase happens, push this information like customer first name, last name, email, phone number to the data layer. Unfortunately, I can't show you how to do that for your site because 
is going to vary uh, depending on the platform that you're using and also how your website is made. I strongly recommend you that you reach out to your developer and ask them to set this up. And I'm actually going to leave a link in the description of this video with instructions on how to set up a data layer and you can just send that information to your developer. If ever you don't have someone that you can trust to set this up, we'd be more than happy to also set this up for you. You can just go ahead and uh, click the link in the description of this video and you can actually book a uh, free strategy session with us and then we can just go over your site, what you're doing and how we would be able to set up a data layer for your site. But don't freak out if ever you don't see a data layer when you're inspecting the page, because like I said, that's only method one. There's still method two, and that's using JavaScript, which I'll just show you in a few minutes. But if you have a data layer available, you'll wanna go to Google Tag Manager, click on variables, scroll down, and you want to create a user-defined variables. And we're gonna open this up and we're selecting data layer variable. And to access an element in a data layer, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is grab the name. So let's say we want to add my first name here or the customer first name. You, all you have to do is copy this and paste it. And we're gonna call this first name. And save it. Now I'm just gonna add the last name. Same thing, customer last name, copy that. And let me just add the email. So customer billing email, I can add that. Control C to copy it, Control V to paste it. Email, perfect, so I can hit save. Obviously, if I'm doing this for real for a customer, I would go ahead and add all the different parameters. But since this is a demo, I want to save some time. I'm just going to add those three. But I think you guys get it on how to access an element from the data layer. And if ever you are having any issues accessing information from the data layer, just let us know in the comment section and I can definitely help. Now we want to actually send this information inside our tag. So if I open up tags, I'm actually using the Facebook pixel template. So if you go to templates, you can actually just just search it in the gallery. If you type like Facebook, you should see it and just add it. Now, once you have it, you can click new, click on tag configuration, and you should see it right here. So it's Facebook pixel and it's by Facebook incubator. Okay. And when you open it up, it looks like this. Now you're most likely setting this up for a purchase event or a lead event. But in some cases, let's say you have a software company and usually people are logged in whenever they're accessing your site, especially members or people that have paid for a subscription, you can potentially send something like first name, last name, email, and phone number for all your different events, okay? But that's actually not how my demo store is set up. I'm only gonna be sending customer information when someone makes a purchase. So I'm gonna show you how to do that for the purchase. So I open up my purchase tag. First of all, you put your pixel ID here. Um, and again, this is a purchase event, so standard, and I chose purchase. And if I scroll down here, there's an option to enable advanced matching. That's exactly what I wanna do. And look what happens when I check this. There's a new section that appears here called customer information data parameters. And now let me just open it up. So by clicking here, I can actually select first name and the parameter value is actually the variable that we just created. So I can type first name. And here you go. And let me add last name now. And let's do email. And let's say that that's all that I'm sending. I could actually just hit the save button. But like I said earlier in this video, I always recommend that you send as much information as possible to Facebook to increase your chance of getting a match, right? So try to send as much information as possible. Now you can save this. And just to show you, if ever I open up the base tracking with just like the regular page view, I can open this up and enable advanced matching. And yes, I can send customers first name, last name, email on a page view. But keep in mind that the majority of the events won't actually have any of the information because these users probably never gave you their information. But if you have something like an e-com store where some of yours are actually 
actually purchase or go on your product page or read your blogs when they're logged in, that's actually amazing because you can send customer information for an event like PageView. Okay, so now that you guys understand how to create a data layer variable and add that to your tag, I wanna show you how to do it via JavaScript because I fully understand that not everyone here will be able to set up a data layer. So I'm going back to this page and in order to send information to Google Tag Manager, or I should say collect information with Google Tag Manager, it needs to be present on the page. So here I could actually send uh, my email, I could send the total, and if I look here, there's billing information. So actually, I could actually go ahead and send all that data. But if ever, let's say it was just like a blank page with the receipt and how much I paid, I would not be able to send customer information. I could send the value and that's cool, but I would not be able to send customer information. But then, and that's kind of what we're trying to do here. So really important to do method number two, you need to be able to see the information on the screen. So in my scenario, I can see it's right here. So what we're gonna do is actually inspect the page again, and I'm gonna hit console, and you're gonna wanna add a Chrome extension. And I'm gonna leave that link in the description of this video. It's totally free. And it's actually a GTM variable builder. So in order to use it, all you need to do is highlight the element you want in your variable. Now just open up your Chrome extension. Make sure again that you are in console and not elements. If not, you won't see anything. So if you highlight, then once it's highlighted and you're in console, open up the Chrome extension, you should actually see something like this. And to test it, you can copy this and paste it. And if we see here, it actually returns what we want. So this right here is a JavaScript variable that grabs this element on this page. So it's dynamic. If ever someone makes another purchase and it's a fully different email, it's not always gonna send the same email, it's gonna send whatever email that is on the page. So hopefully you understand how this works. So I could scroll down here and do the exact same thing for the phone number. So again, I highlight the phone number. Now I open this up and I'm just gonna click the Chrome extension. Boom, perfect. Now here's another JavaScript that I can copy. And if I paste that script here, it gives me my phone number. So now what we can do is use the following one here. So it says for use in a GTM custom JavaScript variable that gives you the script. So we can't actually just paste this one in Google Tag Manager, we need to use a second one. So this one is for my email, so I'm gonna copy it. Go to Google Tag Manager, hit variables, and scroll down again, a user defined variable, open up new one, and we're looking for custom JavaScript. And all I have to do is paste it. And I believe we said this one is for email, so I'm gonna name it email, and uh, let's just put JS so that we know this one's JavaScript. And I can hit save, and now, and now I'm gonna do the same thing for the phone number. So custom JavaScript, going back to my code, and again, it's this one right underneath for use in GTM. So I can copy that, paste it here. Phone number, JS, and I save it. Obviously you could continue and add all your different parameters and create them via JavaScript. Now the same thing will apply here. So you go into your tags and let's say we're setting this up for purchase. So Facebook purchase. Customer information data parameters. Again, you can only see that if you enable it. Um, now we said email, so I could just replace that with email, right? So that's the new one I just created, email JS. So now I can actually go ahead and uh, save it. And it's time for testing. Really, really important that every time you make changes inside Google Tag Manager, do you always test and make sure that everything is sending properly and also properly being accepted inside Advanced Manager. So let me go ahead and preview my site. I'll remove that. Great, now I'm scrolling down. Let me add this one to my cart. And I'm just really going through the purchase process because I've set this up for the purchase event.
Okay, so I just clicked a bunch of buttons to make my purchase and here we have it So everything looks good here now Let me actually go and uh, take a look at and see what happened here So this one right here, that's when this page loaded So that's probably where I'm gonna take a look and see uh, what's going on and I'm actually using a custom event to send my tag here Just one thing to keep in mind is if ever you're using the data layer um, most likely the page um, and and container is loading before the data layer loads and let me show you what I mean here so if I ever I go to uh, container loaded and I click on data layer you should the reason you're seeing something right now is because I'm logged in um, but let's say I wasn't logged in there's a high chance that you would actually not be seeing any of the information here so if ever you're not using a custom event to uh, trigger your tag I recommend that you use something like a Dom ready event which can be done just by going to uh, triggers click open up a new trigger and then Dom ready and then you can say like I don't know let's say you were using the page URL you can just say when page URL is equal to I don't know thank underscore you right because that's your thank you page and then at least when you're using this sort of trigger type you know that it's going to be able to pull information from the data layer but something like a page view it just the data layer doesn't really have a chance to to load right the page you the page will load before the data layer so just one thing to keep in mind now let me if I go to purchase we can see that all the information is here and uh, all right customer first name um, so the dealer has loaded properly but what I want to see is my variables right because that's what I've created and we just want to verify that it is working properly so email that's the one that I created uh, with the data layer here and we can see that under variable type so Cedric and that's the email that I created using custom JavaScript right so they both work um, as they should and uh, it gives you the option and if ever for whatever reason you can't use a data layer you can use JavaScript but as you can probably see it's way easier if ever you're an e-com store because usually on a thank you page you'll have like your order confirmation but if you are a service-based business and you're trying to get leads well you know shooting the customers first name last name email uh, maybe address on the page is not weird but it's not something that we see as often so what maybe you want to do is say something like um, thanks Cedric we will send you an email at then your email right so that you're kind of like giving a reason to have their information on the thank you page hopefully that makes sense and that's something that I used to do for my uh, for my business whenever I did not have a data layer implemented it's just literally just put in their information like like the, the, the email first name uh, last name on the page and then use JavaScript to pull it so that's something you can do one thing to not do though is let's say the page is white then putting also the font white so that you can't see the text. I know that some marketers do that. I mean, you can do it. There's nothing, I guess, wrong with that. It's just, I would not recommend that. I would just recommend that you actually work with the with, with the developers so that they can create that data layer for you instead. But uh, I guess I've seen some people doing that, but I do not recommend that you put the font white and then the background red so they can't see the text but anyways that decision is up to you so guys that is it for this video you now know what is facebook advanced matching and why you should use it and to be honest if ever you're spending more than like 40 or 50 dollars a day on facebook ad it's not really a question you really need to set up advanced matching i've also shown you two different methods of setting this up one of them is using a data layer and that's a preferred method and like i said if ever you need help setting this up our team is here to help go ahead and click the link in the description of this video or it can be somewhere here on the screen and uh, you're actually going to be able to speak to me and again i'm just going to get a better understanding of your platform and how you'll be able to implement data for your site but if that doesn't work and that is not an option for you go ahead and maybe try method number two which is using javascript and once you that is set up really important that you actually uh, test it so make sure that a google tag manager is properly pulling these variables but that is it hopefully guys this video was valuable bye for now